So the helical structure forms two repeating and alternating spaces. And if we look at the backbones in the helix, notice that space is not going to be even. So we have unevenly spaced regions from backbone to backbone. So you can see this region is wider. So we're going to call that major groove. And then we also have narrower regions. We're going to call that a minor groove. So bases that are sitting right here in a major groove, a minor groove, will offer atoms. And these atoms are going to be available for interaction with proteins so that they can form hydrogen bonds. So there's going to be this recognition happening between DNA and the actual protein so that these proteins can initiate events such as DNA replication or gene expression. So in other words, this answers the question, how do proteins interact with DNA? So let's take a look at some of the patterns that we have here. So imagine if I took a DNA molecule and I sliced across and I stretched it out and now I'm looking at it flat. So this is my guanine base and this is cytosine. And then this would be part of the backbone here and here. And so the, the atoms that we have here, and these are shaded in purple, these are the ones that are going to be interacting with proteins because they are available for hydrogen bonding. So proteins, remember these are polymers made up of amino acids, and each amino acid has a unique R group. So these R groups are sticking out, and they're going to be recognizing these specific donors and acceptors. So there's going to be this pattern. So for example, this guanine has nitrogen. So nitrogen will have a negative charge, and oxygen will have a negative charge. Or partially negative charge. And then you can see this right here. Hydrogen is a proton, so it's going to have a positive charge. So nitrogen is an acceptor. Oxygen is an acceptor. Hydrogen would be a donor. So now the protein that will recognize this pattern will have the R groups with these corresponding charges for the formation of hydrogen bond. So suppose you have a protein right here, and the R groups are sticking out. And then remember, you're going to have if this is negative, your R group right here will have to be a positive charge. And if this is negative, we're looking for a positive charge, positive and negative charge. And the bond in between, dot, 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 here is your hydrogen bond. So that means this protein right here is interacting with these bases. And then if you look at a different pattern where you have A and T, notice the pattern of acceptors and donors is going to be different. C and G, this pattern is again different. So if you have all these bases, the sequence of bases in the DNA molecule, they will provide with a different pattern of acceptors and donors. And that's why we say proteins are specific as far as what patterns they will recognize. So a specific protein, such as transcription factor, will recognize a specific sequence of DNA, and this is why that interaction is going to be taking place to express a gene or if the purpose is to replicate the DNA molecule, so initiate the replication process and so. So here's another example of a protein. Remember the 3D shape, how it forms helices, beta pleated sheets, and this is the DNA molecule, and you can see the interaction with it. So in this case, I have a bind DNA binding protein. We have asparagine here as an amino acid, and the bases, T and A, and notice the adenine is offering hydrogen, so that's a donor, and asparagine, the R group, is offering oxygen. So partial negative, partial positive, we're looking at hydrogen bond that's forming right here. So there's another hydrogen bond in between. So that is how these proteins are going to be communicating with DNA molecule and initiating a number of events.